I'll leave I you. think mental <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yo, look, he's I'm been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for this conversation because I think mental health is very important. Like, we tend to forget that the mind is the powerhouse of the body. Welcome to Are You Listening, where we have intentional conversations to help you listen and learn well with your loved ones and strangers. Today's topic, we will be talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. So get your tissues and your popcorn and everything that you need because we're going deep, y'all. I'll be joined by my friends, Mankin and David. Their um, information will be in the description box below. Okay, guys, here's a question. Why should we start? Uh, you know, I just want to hear your opinion. No, I want to hear your opinion. I feel like I want to hear yours. My opinion? Yes. Uh, I think mental health is very important. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Ah, I don't know why it's funny right now, but I truly believe No, you know important. why it's funny. No, no, no. <laughs> no Tell no, us no. why it's is funny to you. Nah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's honestly speaking, it's a foreign subject to me. Uh, it's, it's pretty foreign. Um, I hear it a lot, especially lately because of things that have been going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing it a little bit more nowadays, but um, before you know these uh, times, I didn't really hear much about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that's because of where I'm from where and how from? I was raised. Oh, I, I was born and raised in West Africa, Guinea. Okay. Uh, I lived there till I was 15. Moved there. 10 years ago actually, mm -hmm. uh, 2010. It's a little foreign to me, um, mm. but I, I know it's serious, you know? I'm, I'm not laughing at anybody who's struggling with it. Yes. Yeah, I may probably be struggling with it myself, you mm -hmm. know, but um, yeah, it's it's foreign. So yeah. I'll leave I think that. mental <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, he's I'm been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for this conversation because I think mental health is very important. Like. We tend to forget that the mind is the powerhouse of the body mm. and if your powerhouse is down, you're shut down mm. and people like to, you know, they will fall the, fall, the, fall the body by walking out or eating food and forget the mind and like that, that's very necessary and to your point, it's a very foreign concept to many people but that doesn't necessarily mean that many people don't or aren't suffering from a level right. or oh, some yeah. capacity right. of mental health. Right. They have their very, very, various variations, um, various variations, and different yeah, kinds. It's good. <laughs> they get it. You get it. Um, but um, yeah, it's definitely very important. Right. Right. For sure. <clears throat> so yeah. <laughs> it is very important, but I also think it wasn't important in my life, like in my upbringing. Okay. Um, so I'm from Ghana, and so you know what I think is weird? I think that my parents did a very good job of including mental health without knowing that it was mental health. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So like mm -hmm. we did a lot of like family um, devotionals and the more like sat every week like clockwork Saturday mornings. It was yeah. not just like devotionals, but it was also like a family meeting. Yeah. So if I like hit my brother or I call my brother ugly, after praying Jesus, thank you Father, hallelujah, right? Yeah. Then it would be like, amen. Why did you tell your brother he was ugly? Like it was just like, and it's like, wait, hold up. I thought he was, right. <laughs> he was praying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were always told to like acknowledge kind of what we're feeling without being told to acknowledge what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And I don't really even think that my parents gave had language for it either i think they just thought like okay this is something that we should do and this is how we want to raise our kids yeah. um so i think all of us are very aware of how we feel and how um we try to articulate that mm -hmm. i don't know if all of my siblings do it well mm -hmm. um but for me as a young adult now it's like low-key type top priority because like david yeah. said 
um, we, it, your, your mental, majority of your battles are won in here. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we go through, a lot of things are going on, like we, like we said, everything that's going on right now, whether it be election season in America or, well, not just America, pretty much around the Come world around the world, yeah. right now, right? Like everything that's going on, the racism, police brutality, all these things going on, it takes a toll on your mental health because it's something that you're ingesting. It like, it, it, it plants a seed. Yeah. So it takes a toll on you. It's mm -hmm. funny you said, you know, the, the family part, I can definitely relate to that. Mm -hmm. My mom was, uh, you know, she, it was, I think it was a very similar scenario. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't really talk about mental health or anything yeah. like that. But uh, my family, we would always, um, we would always sit at a table, talk about things that have been going on throughout mm -hmm. the week. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, things are, you know, maybe we're struggling with and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it was always an open conversation. Yeah. But it was never like, oh, um, like, yeah, like nobody really had the specific language yeah. to describe what you were exactly. feeling. It was just like, okay, mm -hmm. I was feeling X, Y, Z yeah. and everybody tried to help you out. Right. That's really, that's really, really all it was. Which is like dope for our parents. Yeah. Shout out to our parents. For sure. Love yeah. you guys. Well. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, my, there are, uh, growing up was fun. <laughs> there are so many factors involved, right? I'm Nigerian, but for me, it's like, I've always been, and you did mention the good word, awareness. I yeah. think that's the first step in the mental health routine, yeah. being aware of where you are mentally. Yeah. I've always been very aware, even as a child of where I am, Unfortunately, I wasn't in an environment where that they fostered it was that. exactly. Mm -hmm. It wasn't talked about. Not even like the way you guys described, like, oh, my family would mentally check up on us. We mm -hmm. didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my mom is a very strong woman. I, she's, I'm, I don't. There are not so many people I talk about mm -hmm. like my mom. And tomorrow is her birthday, actually. Shout oh, out. shout out, Mama! Yeah, Happy she's oh, it's fifty tomorrow. This is wow. pre-recorded, so we definitely celebrated her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but she was so busy being the the dad and the mom in the house um, and then I had three other siblings that just needed a lot of attention and so <laughs> so what did you need? <laughs> I'm a very simple person and so like growing up I had to do a lot of awareness self-awareness for, own, for yeah. my own so I had to grow up real quick but I knew, I didn't know what the word was, like the mental health, mm -hmm. but I knew I was checking up on myself. And yeah. I had ways I was doing that as a child. And like, in retrospect, I'm like, oh, that's what I was doing. So it how did you happen. do it? So we, we talked about our experience with like, our families actually talking openly. Mm -hmm. So how did you check in with yourself then? <clears throat> Usually I get give myself time out. As a mm -hmm. child, yeah. I would beg my sister to lock the door and not come into the room. Cause at some point we were sharing the room, mm -hmm. my sister and I. And she'll be like, oh, you're going through that. Like, she gets very annoyed when I do that. Mm. Mm. And I'm like, yes, I'm going through that. Like, yeah. just leave me yeah. alone. Right. And sometimes they call me weird for doing mm -hmm. that. And I actually thought I was weird for doing that. Mm. Yeah. But I don't regret it now. Because it really, it really did that, help. I feel like your sister is representative of our African culture. Oh, for sure. Like, of this, like, like, bro, I remember, and my dad's probably watching his dad, you know what I'm talking about. I remember when I found out I had allergies. My dad was like, we don't get allergies. <laughs> there's no allergies in Africa. <laughs> like, there's... Guilty. I've said that you so said the same many thing. times. <laughs> but, like, it's this mentality of, mm -hmm. like, we need to kind of be bionic mm -hmm. in some kind of way mm -hmm. that we forget that we're human. Right. And we can't just power through things. Like, there's almost, like, this numbness. Mm -hmm. to certain things that you have to have and if you are not numb then it's like you're soft right. it'll never make it in the world because yeah. things are gonna happen right. people are gonna leave and also you know what i mean and i feel like i don't like that no because i don't think that has to be it and i got the reason for this whole channel right is that power and power is in your tongue to speak life to things and death to things so mm -hmm. if you're telling me this is gonna be trash life is gonna suck <laughs> you need to be hello that's my life we talk about yeah. <laughs> you know so I think that mental awareness allows us to kind of take back the reins mm -hmm. in owning our 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 disposition in life. Yes. Because exactly. we have choices. Yeah. yeah. And we don't have to be what the generations before us have taught us if it wasn't healthy for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And I will say, like, I'm very impressed with how the black community has um, progressed Evolved. over time yeah. with mental health because as <laughs> black peoples, 
<laughs> we know that it's a taboo to especially as a black man it's a taboo to acknowledge you have a problem mm -hmm. mentally and, and, and i think there's a fine line between you share your feelings exactly and i was just gonna say that there's a fine line Can between you mm -hmm. mental illness mm -hmm. and mental health yeah you know? and they kind of get merged together yeah like me acknowledging i have a mental i'm in the mental state of mind doesn't mm -hmm. mean i'm mentally ill right mm -hmm. right it just means right now this is where we are yeah and, and i just want to say like all the black men out there Find someone you could talk to, okay? Yeah. Like cry if you need to cry. Talk about your feelings if you need to talk about to you, talk about your feelings. Your feelings are not invalid just because you're a man. Mm -hmm. Like that's not true. You're not soft because you cry. You're human. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you know the yeah. person before you do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can't do make this to anybody. Sure, yeah. you know make sure, yeah. Make sure you have a safe space. I'm yes. not talking about, you know what I'm saying, going to bus and be like, yo, yeah. I was. Nah, yeah. no. Some people. Protect again, yourself. Protect you yourself. Know, especially, and, and it's crazy because um, the same way guys, you know, grow up thinking, like, oh, I can't be soft. Mm -hmm. I can't talk about my feelings. I can't do this and that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. There are women out there who are growing up hearing these same things mm -hmm. from their parents. So mm -hmm. if they see you as their partner doing those things, they might yeah. think, oh, he's not a real man. You know? Right. So, yeah. It's an so, unlearning that needs yeah, to take place. So just yeah. Be careful because, you know, coming, you know, saying those things to the wrong person. Mm -hmm can be worse than what it was what before. It was. I tell you, because I know growing up, my dad used to tell me like, you have to work three times as hard yeah. when you're going into a room, because you're not only battling the white man that walked in the room, mm -hmm. you're battling the black man that walked in the room, and then you also battle the white woman that walked in the room. So you have to work three times as hard. And I know for me, that kind of affected me, because right, like I'm, I became a perfectionist. Yeah. I became like very like, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Um, I have an achievement mentality, so I'm success driven. So mm -hmm. if I don't achieve something, I feel like I failed. Yeah. Even if nobody, like no one's even checking. Like, mm -hmm. sis, why are you doing this to yourself? But like, that's something that I grew up with and I internalized it. So black women as well, take your time. And women in general, yeah. we, we carry a lot. So give yourself some slack, take a day to just take a moment. Yeah. But, so I wanted to ask you guys. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so how are you dealing with your mental health now? With, we were you in a pandemic, <laughs> uh, racial everything, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yep. We're, we're, we're in America right now. Mm -hmm. um, and now elections yeah. have taken place. And like we said, David's from Nigeria, I'm from Ghana, uh, Mankin is in Guinea, and all of our countries are just also um, kind of in disarray yeah. at the moment. So there's a lot besides just being in America. Um, how are you guys dealing with that? Yeah, it's tough. Um, for me, for the most part, this is like the most unhealthy way of doing it. <laughs> Why you start off with that? Yeah, I, I'm like to be honest. You know, I'm just being. I don't want anybody trying to follow this lead because yeah. you know, uh, it's not healthy. I what I do is most of the time. I, I so I love what I do, right? So mm -hmm. most of the time, I do? kind of. Uh, I'm a software engineer right now, mm -hmm. and most of the time, you know, I kind of just you know throw myself into my work mm. you know just as much as possible because just the same way a lot of people can use video games and all these things to right. distract them yeah mm -hmm. i'm able to do that with my work fortunately you know fortunately mm -hmm. yeah. so i kind of work a lot and when i do take a break i just you know i, I have my family with me now mm -hmm. thank god my mom came back so I'm able to, you know, talk to her. And, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're able to spend some quality time, mm -hmm. and just sometimes I take a break. But honestly, most of the time, what I do is just work. Mm -hmm. um, it's to not distract your mind. Yeah, to just yeah. distract myself. It's not the right way of going. I'm pretty but sure then, when they will tell you what the right way is. <laughs> oh, I don't think we know the right way. I don't think there's a standard. Yeah, there's well, a way that works for you. Right. But then my question though is, when work becomes the stressor, mm -hmm. how do you then cope? My mom. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so there is this there's this article that um I was telling you about it. Mm -hmm. the, I think it's like thirty-six questions. Yes. Of something about you, you ask thirty-six questions and you are almost guaranteed to fall in love, whatever. But there's this one question there, uh, where they ask, um, if you were to I think something about if you were to spend time if you were to pick who to spend time with, you know, mm -hmm. for the rest of your life or something like that, who would it be? Yeah. And legit for me it was my family. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Because right. 
That's I thought you were gonna say your mom's. So I was like, no, <laughs> that's no, facts. no, no, no. You know, just my family because we're just able to. I don't know when I'm when I'm with them. It's just as if the world doesn't really exist mm, anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like mm. it's like my little bubble of like you know, yeah. um, fun, protection, you know, comfort. That's so that's dope. that's yeah. a safe zone. Yes, safe zone, exactly. exactly. That's, that's where I go mm -hmm. when work gets crazy because work does get crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> work gets really crazy yeah. sometimes. So that's yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mental health has always been huge for me. But this year it took prevalence. It really did because I mean to your point, right? There's so much going on right now mm. and we don't want to start talking about them. But being like you said, Nigerian and living in the US, you're dealing with things going on in the US, you're dealing with Nigeria. For those that don't know, there's like a whole police brutality thing going on in Nigeria and SARS, you probably have seen it. It's it's a whole thing and I'm directly impacted because that's my country, right? And I have friends and family there. Yeah. And then they still work and then you still have to, you know, <laughs> pay bills and just regular things, just minor things. Mm -hmm. They could, you know, accumulate. And in typically, I tend to shut down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how she's nodding because she knows what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I mean shut down guys, I mean, legit turn Yo, off like I, like you call david you're not picking i'm not picking my calls day one okay well maybe he's busy <laughs> day two maybe he's out day three maybe he died <laughs> day, <laughs> like i'm talking about like a no. week week and a half I, I could go weeks without responding to messages and calls when you say unhealthy mm -hmm. that's unhealthy yeah because what that does and what, what you're I, doing better i'm doing better that's that's what i'm, I'm trying to talk about thank you <laughs> i'm doing better <laughs> but uh, what that does for me is I thought because like I said growing up as a child that was how I coped right. as a child life was simpler mm. right? now it's complex right. and doing that as a child all I had was family mm -hmm. now I have friends as family mm -hmm. and when I do that I lose them mm -hmm. right and I'm starting to realize that and I'm losing me in them I'm mm -hmm. losing so much it's just it becomes complex yeah and so with therapy I've come to realize that the best thing for me to do is live in the moment mm. and it's a very cliche thing to say but and it's also very hard to do but i've been trying these days to when it gets too much mm -hmm. just focus on what i'm looking at mm. it could be something as simple as i am looking at that throw pillow and that's all i want to do right now yeah and everything has to go mm. and it's a mental gymnastics because it's not easy yeah. to just throw everything away but right. you have to constantly remind yourself that you are exercising your mental strength to yeah. get to that place where you can shut things off mm -hmm. um, so that's how I'm trying to cope now so, um, so like Marilyn called me yesterday when I had a very long day guys I had a very long day at work <laughs> and I saw her FaceTime oh David will not pick up <laughs> I picked up she goes tell them what you said you said you picked up oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> she said you picked up <laughs> she was shocked she called oh, me what? and she was shocked that i picked up yo y'all because let me tell you okay so you know how triggered there's always you know when you're calling someone and usually you're just normal people be like oh yeah they'll pick up like, yeah. there's no thought about it david i was like please pick up please pick up <laughs> and he picked up and i was really excited about yeah. that yeah Oh my gosh, I just remember that joy. I felt like real life. And if life. you're a yeah. friend of mine watching this and I've done this to you, <laughs> it is not personal. I love you to yeah. pieces. I actually love you, that's why I'm ignoring you. Oh, wow. Think about it. Interesting. That was that was the And mindset. pray about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing. Um, but there's something that you said that okay. I wanna um go back to you. And you said that what you did when you were younger didn't work now. Yes. And it's, I think that's something to take a note of, right? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, sometimes as we grow, we think we can do the same things, but you're at a different capacity. Um, I believe that like as we grow, like our capacity grows, mm -hmm. um, especially for me if in Christ, right? Like I think that everything that I'm able to do, my skill set, everything, God like allows me to be able to do the many things I do True. Um, and gives me the strength to do it, right? But I think also, when you were a child you said you used to be able to shut out mm -hmm. no problem you come back out when you're ready but you can't do that no more mm -mm. so you have to figure out another way mm -hmm. so whatever your coping mechanism used to be if it's not working 
It's time to right. switch it up. Switch Maybe it up. you need a therapist. Maybe mm -hmm. you need a safe zone. Maybe you need people that like actually you can be honest with and vulnerable with and tell them, um, hey, this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And I like recently had to do that <laughs> with my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not easy, right. y'all. It's so it's not. not easy, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So for me, mm -hmm. I say this all the time, but I believe that you, you are the most valuable resource that you have, mm -hmm. period. There's no one in the world like you. There's no one ever that can do what you do the way you do it. So that means that you need to take care of yourself as if that is true. True. Sure. If you buy, everybody talking about this Birkin stuff, right? Yeah. If you, are you gonna put, are you gonna put the Birkin bag on the floor right. every day when you walk in the house? No, because it's a value. Exactly. So the same way of yourself, you have to treat yourself like you have value and you do. So what I do, I have to learn to take a rest day. Mm. Um, so faithfully every week, I try to have my rest day. Hopefully, usually I try to make it on Saturday. Um, but if I can't, I'll figure out another day in my week where I can get that rest day in. And by resting, I don't mean just sleeping. Um, I try to sleep in, but the way my body is set up, she wakes up at six every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that, that's like even kind of late. My body's like up at five. But um, I try to sleep in a little bit and I just do things that day that like make me feel good. Yeah. So if it's just like hanging out with my family, my nieces and my nephews, or like watching a movie, or um, I don't know, or creating something, or just talking mm -hmm. to my friends, hanging out with my friends, like yeah. things like that like make me feel good. Yeah. And that's what I do for my rest day. And I realized that when I take that moment to rest, I'm actually much more productive exactly. for the rest of the week yeah. exactly. than when I don't. Cause like I told you earlier, like I'm very success driven. So I feel like if I'm not doing something, I'm messing up. Right, right. Somebody's gonna beat me in doing this. And I had to really untrain that, like really through my relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. understanding that like, hey, you're not what you do. Right. right. You can do what you do well, but you're not what you do. That doesn't equate to your value. Exactly. So um, that's, that's kind of how I've been figuring it out. I've taken rest days. I'll take moments like breaks during my day yeah. mm -hmm. when I know I'm getting overwhelmed and I'll do like a check-in. Um, I'll always, one thing I ask myself all the time is like, okay, Marilyn, where's your heart at right now? Mm -hmm. Like if I feel overwhelmed or especially in the morning when I wake up, that's a huge thing I do on the way to work. Um, just to make sure like I'm aware yeah. of what I'm feeling and not trying to disregard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I feel like that's healthy. Yeah, the rest day thing. <laughs> it works. Talk about it. <laughs> so, um, I didn't have a rest day before. I Ever. Just kinda, <laughs> Still don't have a rest day. Yeah, I kind of just work, you know, um, on like different projects. Mm -hmm. So, I would work like Monday to Friday on my actual job, and then mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, I would do like a side project, right? Mm -hmm. But then one day, I don't know, we were having a conversation. We were talking. I think you were, you were talking about some, everything that you were doing. Yeah. And then you asked me, you know, usually when you're telling people like, oh, I'm doing this, this, and that, they'll ask me, oh, cool, how's that going, how's that going? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she asked me, she's like, oh, when do you rest? And <laughs> I paused for a second. I'm like, wait, I actually don't rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she, I don't know if you took my phone or I took I, my phone. I you think took I did. My phone. I took it, yeah. She took my phone and she put a, a reminder for mm -hmm. every Sunday. Uh, something like to rest anywhere but work mm -hmm. yeah. and so I've been doing that uh, you know as much as I can and um, how do you feel and it feels really good to be honest it feels amazing yeah. those yeah. rest days very are very fun. important mm -hmm. you wouldn't you wouldn't really notice it when you're just like on, on the yeah. move but uh, that's something that everybody should do mm -hmm. very very important and Marilyn brought up a very good point when she said when you rest and you mentally check up on yourself, you tend to be more productive. Yes. Yeah. I read this book, oh, this book, Meg J. It, it's written by Meg J. Uh, titled The Defining Decade. You mm -hmm. need to read it. And it's like, why your 20s matter and how to make the most of it. Because as you can tell, we're all ambitious people. <laughs> uh, so, you didn't know. <laughs> going into my 20s, I was like, I need to make the most of it. Right. Uh -huh. And I read this book and she talked about Fuel in the Mind mm. very vaguely. But in Fuel in the Mind, she said, People don't realize the strength mm -hmm. in weakness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just letting go makes you more stronger. Yeah. Much, much more stronger. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, even again, black community, right? They disparage mental health awareness mm -hmm. and they don't talk about it, but there is strength in it. Yeah. There is strength in acknowledging that I'm human and right. <laughs> I'm gonna need to chill yeah. for a minute. Mm -hmm. 
especially, I'm gonna chill. especially as New Yorkers. Like, we're always oh, time is money and money is time, and we gotta do this and blah 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 blah. And you guys are like in tech industry, tech sales. Um, I'm communications and everything, so it's like your 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 content is gold. Right. What you're creating, what you're doing, your time spent. Like your time needs to equate to some type of success. Yeah. Like it's not just like, oh, what'd you do today? Oh, I was chilling. Yeah, yeah, they gonna be like, right. a regular person gonna be like, oh, you got money, okay? Right. <laughs> like that you have money enough to free to chill. But y'all, y'all, talk about it. There's a reason why we are meant to rest, okay? Yes. God rested on the seventh day. He sure did. Come on now, <laughs> come on now. Sure it's, it's good for you. Like if it's good for him, it's good for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I know it's changed my life and the way that I had to do it is the reason why I even took Megan's phone is because I had to do that for myself. I have like this huge planner um, and I have like three calendars in my phone. I had to literally go in and put rest, mm -hmm. physically see it, physically write it and remind myself like, wait, this is your day. Mm -hmm. And if, and I had, and y'all, it's hard. Yeah. Yep. It is hard because people will, once again, you the only one that's going to look out for you. Yeah. People will be like, oh, um, on Saturday, you're going to be good, right? I just need you to come do blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you got to say, no. Yep. Yep. You Actually, I can't. Yep. And you don't have to explain yourself. Because yeah. that's none of their business. <laughs> okay? You do not have to explain yourself. But you have to have that time. And obviously, life happens. Things mm -hmm. change. Like yeah. I said, if I can't do it on the Saturday and I got to figure it out, yeah. then I got to figure it out. But it's worth it i yeah. promise you it's worth it yeah i exactly. want to mention this one show again she put me onto the show <laughs> um as you can see she helps me out a lot <laughs> friends for life but, um, there's this one show called uh a million little things yes Very which beginning. i actually actually yeah. i gotta give credit where credit is due i actually got that from our friend reggie Oh, really? Reggie, Reggie. Oh, nice. What up, Reggie? Oh, Reggie. Yeah, Reggie actually um, put me onto that. But yeah, so that show, very beginning, you know, the guy who's the most successful, yeah. has everything. Mm -hmm. the, the first thing, when I watched the show, you know, the, the camera angle was behind him. Mm -hmm. You can see his office and the view, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. I want to be like that. Yeah. Right? And then. And a few minutes later, he Hold on. If you have not watched the million little things and you're gonna watch it, this yeah. is a spoiler a spoiler, a spoiler alert. Yeah. I mean it's the like the first few scenes. But it's a spoiler alert. Yes, 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 yes. I don't want nobody yeah. to get triggered. Yes. Yeah. I'm warning you. Um five four three two one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm like, yo, this guy like he has a really dope office, nice mm -hmm. view, money. Mm -hmm. I want that, right? And then a few minutes later into the show, kills himself. I'm like, whoa. Oh. Bro. Hold up. <laughs> I don't want all of that. I don't know if I want all that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and throughout the show, you, you know, you get to find out, like, one of his friends, uh, you know, at some point made a statement. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, like, you know, our friend, uh, I think his name is John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John didn't kill himself because of, of this one thing. He said it could have been a million, million little, little things. things. Oh, and that's I'm like, that's yeah. So, okay. you know, and you just have to be careful because yes. most of the time you won't even know yeah. that there are things happening because there are little right. things here mm -hmm. and there unless you take that break and really sit mm -hmm. down and think yeah you'll miss it and by the time you realize it's kind of too late yes. yeah now let's talk about it yeah <laughs> because i obviously know that we're all very strong people mm -hmm. very strong will mm -hmm. as a strong person how do you navigate your mental health check right your mental check yeah. in a world where people see you as the one right. yeah or like strong they look up to you which mm -hmm. i know I, I mean i speak to marilyn more so yeah. i know this is something we talk about yeah. we're always there for people right. who's there for us mm -hmm. you know so let's talk about that yeah um that's a that's Macon. a very very good i'm gonna question. let Macon start yeah i'm gonna let him um. start <laughs> <laughs> all right so in my case i've never I think the way I am, uh, depending on the person that I'm speaking to, mm -hmm. I know when to be vulnerable and when not to be yeah. vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm speaking to someone like my mom or my sister, <clears throat> they're very strong um, and they usually give me very good advice. So I'm always vulnerable with them. Mm -hmm. So I have the people that I like, I get my intake from, yeah. right? And then I have people that, that put I out put out to, out to right? So yeah. there are people mm -hmm. that you know i could speak to right now and i would i wouldn't really pour my heart to them but i would let them tell me and then mm -hmm. i'll try to help them up you know what yeah. i'm saying so i think you have to find a balance yep um but that's 
I'm pretty average. I'm not that strong. <laughs> but um, when it comes to people like my older sister, for example, very, very strong. I really don't know who she speaks to, but she's there for everybody. Yeah. You know? And um, the other person that I know is Marilyn. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's been like that for a while until recently, you know, mm -hmm. finally. <laughs> yes. She started, you know, speaking uh yes. you know, finally speaking to us, but yeah. back then it was just she would just would give out, give out, give out. Mm -hmm. Um but I won't speak for you. Mm -hmm. So yes. go ahead and tell them what's up. <laughs> go ahead. So okay, so for a while um for a while I would definitely internalize everything. And because here's how I thought, here's how I thought about it. Because everyone was coming to me, mm -hmm. I didn't want to myself, I didn't want to look weak for them. Yes. So I felt like telling them what I'm going through would actually hurt them. Like, Dad, if Marilyn can keep together, how am I supposed to keep together? Yes. And, and that's really selfish and prideful of me. Yes. Because I'm not acknowledging my humanity. And I think that people need to see your faults and your flaws and able to be able to be there for you. Um, so I had to get to a place where I had to realize like my weakness is actually a strength mm -hmm. and I can use that. Mm -hmm. And I know for a while, um, the balance, right? I always had people that I was pouring into and I always had uh, people that I think like would, would pour into me as well. But I never thought, I never had anybody for a while that I thought that I could pour, that I could like just talk to. Yeah. Just be like, hey, what you going through? All right, this is what I'm going through. Like, I didn't have that, or I thought I didn't have it. I wasn't aware to it, because I was like, well, no, because they talked to me, mm -hmm. so then who they gonna talk to? <laughs> <laughs> like that yeah. whole thing. And I didn't yeah. realize like, not, like that recent um, thing where I was able to talk to my friends um, was super scary. Yeah. It was super scary. That was like a year ago, last yeah, year. It's been, yeah. it's been a year. And y'all, we've been friends for how long? <laughs> we've been friends for a while. Yeah. And um, and literally last year was the first time that I actually was like at a very, very, very low part point in my life. It wasn't the first time I was in a low point in my life, but it was the first time I allowed other people to see it. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that I felt like, no, I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. And I gotta talk to my friends. And the first thing that I thought about was like, um, and I, to me, I think I think like it was it was God telling me like you have to let your friends be your friends. Mm -hmm. And literally, I will never forget. I wrote I wrote I'm a writer, so I wrote in my phone. I remember I was crying and I was driving, and I wrote in my phone that at this point my sleeves are just tissues for my tears. Mm -hmm. And when I wrote that, I was like, Nah, we're low. Mm -hmm. And I know what it feels like to get lower. And I don't want to be there. Yeah. And I remember I texted you and Reggie, yeah. and I was like, "What did I even? I don't remember what I said, but I, I just knew. <laughs> I know. I just knew that after I sent it, I was like, that was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, that was dumb. I don't know why I just did that. Now I'm not even gonna text you back. Like, come on. And I remember that night, Megan was like, "Nah, we gotta. We, I'm gonna pick you up. Yeah. And um, yeah. And that was the first time that I allowed someone in. And then from there, I was like, okay, I gotta tell mommy and daddy. And um, cause they're like my best friends. Mm -hmm. And when I got home talking to them, I still had that gut thing of like, okay, so we gonna talk about it, we gonna talk about all of it. Either we not gonna talk about it, or we gonna talk about all of it. And then yeah. I didn't want them to feel like they yeah. failed in their parenting or anything like that. And um, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. Even talking about it right now, I don't know if y'all know like, this, it's like super uncomfortable. Very pensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. But I know that it's necessary because yes. I believe in community. I believe in the power of community. Yeah. And I think that I feel safe. And if I call my friends my friends, like if I can't really talk to them, if the way that I tell everybody else to, I'm like, yeah, just talk to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Then I need a place where I can also talk to somebody. Yeah. So that's how I've Absolutely. I've been able to do it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, for me, it's kind of like two parts. Mm -hmm. I, the first part is pretty much similar to what you said, right? You feel like you're there for so many people, you can't disappoint them, you can't yeah. be weak because they see you as strength. Mm -hmm. And if you're weak, they have no hope, right? The second part, which I think is actually the main one, is independence mm. or over... Like, I don't even know how to qualify this now. Yeah. I 
it's like that. I got it. I'm yeah, good. exactly. Mm -hmm. With how my life has been, uh, Marilyn knows my story. I've been independent for a very long time mm -hmm. and had to do a lot of things myself, which I'm proud of and I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of how far I've come in mm -hmm. life. But at, at a point, it becomes, I don't want to burden you with my problem. Mm -hmm. I don't want to burden you with yeah. me. I mean, very mm -hmm. recently, I went through something very traumatic and yeah. I didn't want to bother anybody. I had to. Marilyn was so mad when I told her, it, like a few yeah. days to the main event and turns out I needed someone, I couldn't do it by myself but the, the mere thought of I'm about to burden you with my life, Yeah. hell no mm. and I feel like that's like, a no. lie, yeah. that's right. a lie that, that exactly. we allow, that we accept Exactly. That it's like, oh, if you if you let your guard down, like the like the black man thing, right? If you, mm -hmm. if black men don't cry or any of this stuff, or you're soft, or oh, if you tell people how you really feel, they're gonna use it against you. Yeah. That too, right. like all of these weird things are yeah. walls that uh, that isolate us. Exactly. And we're not meant to do life alone. And like, lessons us actually. It does yeah. lessen us. And through therapy. <laughs> <laughs> we got the magic word talk, really. That's yeah. what it is. It's simple talk. And mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's like I am now learning to talk. Yeah. When, not necessarily put myself down, I don't want to put it that way, but just telling people where I am, really. Because yeah. people will just have these ideas of, oh, David is doing this and doing that, and he's amazed. And I'm like, no, this is where I am. Right. Quite frankly, I'm not this and I'm not mm -hmm. that, and I am this. Just managing expectations and being real with people. Yes. yes. Managing expectations, because yes. I am not a perfect being. Mm -hmm. And I want to be human, and I want you to see me as yeah. human, you know. And that's my flaws and all, and weaknesses included. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, talk has been it, mm -hmm. because I realized. Oh, if I say therapy one more time, I'm just, I'm just, I'm done. It's new, guys. Point, it's new for me, okay? I'm excited. Point, tag her. I'm excited. I'm just gonna tag my therapist. But uh, during therapy, I realized that not one person in my life knows my full story. Mm -hmm. And it took I, a lot ooh, for me. That. It took a lot for me to even tell my therapist all of it because she said, I want to know all of it. And I'm like, girl, you're not ready. Uh, <laughs> but and then I realized not one person in my life knows yeah. my full story. And that's sad because mm -hmm. you're not here alone. The value of community, yeah. right? So yeah, talk. Yeah. Whew. That was a lot to talk about. <laughs> Mentally, whatever. Oh, oh. And honestly, like, there's power in our honesty, yes. which is the whole reason for this channel. Yes, is because I really do think that, like, when people get to, when you take the cover off and you expose things, is it scary? Yes, it is. Okay, being a content creator is not. Something I thought I'd be doing in my life. <laughs> but I do think that there's power in it. And anything that can like push us further, make us better people, and um, bring that potential of who God is calling us to be, I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So last and final thoughts. What advice would you give to your younger self about mental health? I'm definitely not going first on this one. <laughs> David, what would you say to your younger self? Pick an age, tell me what age you're talking to. Oh, I know the age. Okay. Uh, He's nine. Ooh, what did you say to your nine-year-old so, self? So, for those that don't know, I left high school. Oh, all of you probably don't know. <laughs> I left high school at 15. So you can imagine where my life has been. So at nine, I he was- was a boy genius. Oof, I was, at nine, I was already in middle school. I just remember nine was very pivotal for me because that was when I changed schools and trajectory and like that was when I felt like I was an adult. I had mm. that was when independence mm. right came. Yeah. David Uchechuku <laughs> Ibeleme. Yes, full name. That's my full name. <laughs> you can write that. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that. Yeah, I'm figure it out. Nine year old David. Breathe. Mm. Ooh, breathe. It's going to be okay. And you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, what you were doing then was cute at 16. I'm gonna need you to change it up. Uh, but, you know, breathe and you're doing good. And you will turn out to be a decent human being. <laughs> Just breathe. That's it. We the boy was not breathing. We love the modesty. No, <laughs> I agree. No, I love okay. that. I love that. Breathe. Yeah. Stop what breathing. <laughs> What? What? I'm not gonna lie, when I was younger. How, okay, give the age. age. What uh, age are you telling from me? From when to? I can remember, I'd say probably like 12, around okay. 12. Um, 
from the age of 12 to probably <laughs> like 20, 21. Wow. <laughs> All sorts of distractions, really. I think that's what that's that, that's what my life had been mm -hmm. between 12 and 20 to 21. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because you know I was really there were there were things I had demons yeah. that I didn't want to face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was always looking for the next thing to distract me. Mm -hmm. And then I think around the age of 21. When I got my accident, yeah, is when I had to come. Yeah. I actually was forced to mm -hmm. come to a pause. <laughs> literally. literally, literally, I had to come to, to a pause to face whatever to it is face that you're whatever doing. I had. So, yeah. mm -hmm. can you imagine? It was just crazy. So, to my younger self, uh, take some time mm -hmm. and you know sit down, think, and you know deal with your demons. Mm -hmm. uh, stop running away from them. Because mm. at the end of the day, they did catch up to you <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna come. They're gonna come. So, They're gonna come. So would you tell your younger self to care? Yes. To care um, definitely care more. Uh, listen to your parents. <laughs> 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 listen to your parents and just, you know, take a break from all the distractions. Mm. Uh, the distractions aren't gonna help you. They're cool. You know, they're fun. They make you who you are, but yeah too much of distractions is, is not helpful mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that's what i would say i didn't think this was going to be so vulnerable <laughs> and i came up with the questions <laughs> i would tell little marilyn what age mm. Oof. eight-year-old marilyn okay i would tell eight-year-old marilyn that is in her room 9 p.m because uh, she doesn't want to watch Unsolved Mysteries with the family because she doesn't understand the point of the show. <laughs> um, to know that it's going to be okay. Mm. I would tell Marilyn to let people in. Um, you don't always have to be strong. In that... Hmm. Mm. Take your time. <laughs> Ooh, I don't Take like your time. <laughs> I don't like this. Um... You have more in you than you know. You have more in you than you know. So keep doing what you're doing, but let people in and you're gonna be okay. Mm. Yes. You know, when you were talking about that, mm -hmm. I remember this, I don't know if you guys watched Call Me By Your Name. Mm -mm. It's a very good movie. Mm -hmm. Netflix? I don't think so, I don't know. You know. We'll <laughs> find it and it'll be in the description yeah. box. <laughs> but, um, at the end of the movie, the dad was talking to his son and this line, mm -hmm. till today, I cherish this line. Mm -hmm. He said, we rip out so much of ourselves mm -hmm. so as not to feel mm -hmm. that at age 30, we go bankrupt. Wow. But to rip out yourself not to feel, mm -hmm. what a waste. Wow. And that was that i think was actually the beginning of my journey to like living in the moment mm -hmm. yeah. because i realized that most times we're trying not to feel yeah. mm -hmm. we're trying to be strong we're right. trying to be strong yeah sometimes just feel yeah. yeah just feel because at 30 you're done you know and then you feel like you want to go back to those years to make do but like mm -hmm. you don't have those yeah. years anymore yeah also sometimes sorry to cut you yeah. off but i want to make sure because there are people who they're not like quote unquote the strong people, yeah. mm -hmm. but they're the jokesters. They're, mm -hmm. the, yes. you know, they're the fun people. This you know is for you saying? too. This Coping for mechanisms. You too. Yes. Uh -huh. I used to do that all the uh -huh. time in high school. I used to make everybody else laugh, mm -hmm. make sure everybody else felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was struggling, man. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. That's actually a good one. Yeah, there's a lot of Coping mechanisms. Out there that yeah. I have demons. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, take yeah. care of yourselves, guys. <laughs> take care of yourself for real. For sure. <laughs> it's actually like this. I, I, yeah, I'm right. <laughs> he was trying to figure it out. <laughs> He's new to therapy. <laughs> I told y'all, we're new. It's a process. <laughs> okay, guys. So this is the point in the video where we tell you, uh, give you some tips for you to either recreate this conversation or just more tips for you to have more meaningful conversations with you and your loved ones and strangers and friends okay okay so um this conversation <laughs> if you are a grown adult that can fight. we call it networking <laughs> <laughs> but if you are a child baby no. boy baby girl don't do it don't talk to strangers okay um so this conversation was very vulnerable 
I, if you can tell, it was very vulnerable. So you have to be willing before you even come, come into the conversation to let your guard down and allow your friends and your family, because I don't think this conversation would have with strangers, um, to allow them to see you, see you for real. So first tip, definitely, if you're having a conversation like this or anything touchy, most of the, the topics that we have on this channel will be a little touchy. So you have to definitely come in with an open mind and allow yourself to be vulnerable. Um, another tip is uh, a key component to active listening is actually assimilation, right? You need to be able to assimilate what they're saying. And the easiest way to do this, which we did throughout this conversation is you listen you assimilate and then you shed light by having your own personal experience right mm -hmm. because it's the whole idea of you don't know where i've been walk in my shoes you know mm -hmm. if you've been in my shoes because now i hear you mm -hmm. and i understand you because it's happened to me in this way right. um so shedding light after assimilating and having a personal experience and having relating to a situation or to a word like when i talked about finding strength and weakness mm -hmm. and marilyn explains it in our own perspective yeah uh or when she talks about mental health as awareness as a key component mm -hmm. and i explain in my own perspective things like that it's really it really helps you engage in a conversation and just to clarify this doesn't mean that you are taking over the conversation Ooh, you're still acknowledging the person's perspective and what they're talking about exactly. and you're adding to it by showing how your experience is the same or similar mm -hmm. or how it made you think of that experience yeah, yeah just to clarify definitely. and not necessarily there's adding, a difference <laughs> there's a difference and not necessarily adding to you could also discriminate from yeah. by your own yeah. experience it's just you're not um, diminishing you're exactly, adding exactly exactly not the whole oh i hear you but no yeah, yeah. Not that. that's not what we're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely yeah and the third uh tip is um, just asking questions to you know allow the person to further uh, explain what they mean mm -hmm. by a certain thing um, just so you can get more insight into what they're really saying so you can really understand what they mean um, yeah I think that's pretty much it so guys thank you for watching another uh, video yeah. of are you listening the very first conversation that we've had I want to thank my friends Mankin and David for being with us today and don't forget real conversations intentional conversations only happen when you start them peace out like subscribe all of that all of that <laughs> <laughs>